Now watch this. Normal people, normal people don't know enough about this. When they want to draw a tin can, they draw something like this. That would be me. <laughs> now I want to tell you, whatever the, this is called, you don't even remember these names, the height and width relationship. Once you establish that in your head, I usually draw a center line first, so I can keep it symmetric about the center line. You know what I mean? Without this line, I'm not going to make this too shallow. The right. center line gives me a sense of balance. Then I know that all tin cans or ellipses are, ha are not pointed at the end like people do, like that. They're round. How round? Half of whatever this is. So if you draw a circle here, that's how round. Am I going to mm -hmm. pass my hand? No. Okay. That's how round it is. Now, once I get that, I go straight down. I'm going to draw a tin can now. The kind of can you get beans in or something. Straight down. You take your time, use a ruler. But the bottom circle is all the same width as the top one, but it's deeper. The reason is because you're higher above it. In other words, it's the same width, but it's different in height. Meaning, if it's a glass, this will have more bulge here, have more bulge here than this does, because you're higher above the, of the, the bottom of the glass. But if you put a camera at the level of the glass and photograph it, the top will come out straight, and you'll see an ellipse on the bottom. If the camera is at that height, you know what I mean by yeah. that? You can't see a disc unless. Hold it up to your eyes straight. So if you put the camera above, you have to show the degree of ellipse. The higher the camera is, the more, the wider the ellipse. And if you write up on top, it's a true circle. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense here? Yes. Now watch the coffee can bit. I'm going to draw a coffee can fast here and round out the edges. Make sure you round out the edges. How round, whatever this width is, half. Then you draw two parallel lines if you're drawing a can of beans. And the bottom one always bulges more, but it doesn't smack into that. It flows into that, like that. See, normal people, whoop, they stop right there. But the bottom always fares, fares means gently flows into that. Now, shading. You make this dark, up and back, and you ease up on the pressure of the pen. I'm easing up, and when I get to the near middle, middle, I skip a space, and start with this value, and then I get lighter and lighter as I go over. Now, if that's a tin can, see? Now, if I want to uh, do something new to the can, I'm going to make it an open can where the top is taken off. So I make it dark where it's light. This is where it's light. I make the inside of the can dark. And I keep getting lighter. So it's light where it's dark and dark where it's light. Does that Inverse. look better? Do you have trouble with that? No. Okay. Now, that's a tin can. Okay? Now if it's tin cup, you just put a handle on it like that. Now it's a tin cup. If it's a frying pan, you draw an ellipse. Now you know how to draw it with a round end. Then you draw a center line as best you can, as near the center as you can. Now go down a short distance to the depth of what you think a frying pan is. Then you tilt the edges, because a frying pan is not straight like a tin can. The edges are like more like that. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Then you draw whatever this circle is here a little stronger than that. And you carry it inside like you could see it. See, see what I'm doing? I'm drawing a smaller ellipse and a larger ellipse. Hmm. Now here's how you shade it. You bring this line down as long as something where these two meet. See? A oh, cone. Yeah. And you shade at an angle now. It's straight up and down if the can is straight. If it's angular, 
is shading is angular, but it starts changing its angle because you're always keeping it in line with that dot. So you, when you get about halfway through, you, up and you, down. or a little more than that, you ease up on your pressure so it's only dark in this area. Now you make this dark in this area because it's light here. And then you heavy up this line because it's in the foreground. And you put a handle on it. That's a frying pan for you. Do you understand that angle? Mm -hmm. Do you? Yes. Now let's draw a vase. If you draw a vase like this, you draw one ellipse and a center line. And you shape it on one half, as if, say, a flower vase. That center line helps you maintain uniformity on both sides, if you take your time. Now, how do you shade that? You split this distance with a line. Whatever this distance is, you split it. Meaning, whatever this distance is. So okay. I'm going to split this. And I'm traveling in the middle of the middle of the two lines. I'm going to make it an open jar. So this is... You can see both ends. The camera's above it. Then I'm going to do the middle of this middle. See it? and the middle of that middle. Try to keep it in the middle. So this shading now can no longer be like the tin can, which is up and down. This is the dark area, the first split, see it? And then this in here might be a half tone, a little less than that, and this a little less than that. That's how you make a thing look shaded round. Was that too fast? No. Do you have any questions right up to that? No. Okay. Now the inside, uh, this would be shaded here, but the, the black area would be larger at the maximum bulge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean by that? Right. And then uh, you can make it real dark here, very black. And then ease up on your pressure as you move toward the center. And then very little pressure here. And then where it's dark, I'll make the inside light, and where it's light, I'll make the inside of that vase dark. Do you see that? Now, you getting anything out of this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now what? Suppose I want to draw a flower.